Alright, another fake Sagan video. Might be the last one. Already did half of this video, and unfortunately the camera you know, hasn't failed in a while. <laughs> so it's a, it's a sign it's a sign from God. Uh, anyway, um, so this is just kind of disappointing. Uh, it, you know, just the typical changing the subject. Um, don't deal with the argument, uh, the messenger instead of the message. Um, all of that kind of crap. Um, so, yes, Fake Sagan's uh, questions were intended merely to sit there and say, you have, a, you, have a, you have a psychological philosophy. You see, you have a psychological disorder, and that's why you don't see how wonderful God's creation is. <laughs> you, don't, you don't see the splendor in the whole plan of the pearly gates. Yes, the lovely pearls. Pearls are so freaking lovely. Um, just complete mush, of course, and um, disappointing because, you know, I thought the punchline would be, I was hoping the punchline would be better than that. Like I said, when I saw the questions, I kind of knew this is where it was going, you know, that you're just this more of this kind of psycho babble bullshit um, that we're just, um, you know, we can't do anything called thinking, and you especially can't do any thinking when you're, say, six or seven or eight years old. That's impossible. And, of course, it's not impossible. Um, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, just kind of annoying. So I have pointed out, even in this series of videos, I think I've pointed out that, um, you know, at a very early age I found the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the life game to be, um, um, unexplained and therefore, uh, suspect. The, the very fact that adults didn't have any kind of, uh, clue what the fuck was going on. Um, and we're making up stuff like gods and Santa Clauses and leprechauns made it kind of obvious that obviously these people don't know what the fuck's going on. Um, and so I'm going to have to discover the truth myself, and that's where I went on my truth discovery thing, sticking bobby pins and light sockets and whatnot, breaking everything in sight to see how it all works. <clears throat> um, anyway, so... I guess I just deal with this. I, there's just a certain inaccuracy in this this premise. Uh, it started suddenly in your teenage years. No, it didn't. I was just to explain the anxiety disorder part, but it, nothing started then. <laughs> okay, I mean I went through periods before my teenage years when I was about nine, um, where I was actually schizophrenic and I actually had demonic voices in my head and trying to kill me, trying to throw me downstairs and trying to throw me into traffic and trying to throw me over the rail at the Grand Canyon, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, that went on until I was about 11, and then, you know, finally that subsided, and then the anxiety took over, and blah, 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 blah. But it, this, it, this, again, the, the, the fact that somebody would find it disquieting and uncomfortable to exist in a, essentially a, a giant meat grinder, you know, to live in a, a city made of meat grinders or something, um, you know, every step you take is... Uh, something's at risk and vulnerable, even yourself especially. Um, and the fact that you think people should be comfortable with that is, in my opinion, um, evidence of your imbecility. <laughs> okay, uh, so I'd first argue that um, fixing requires discomfort with broken. So nothing's going to get fixed if people attempt to quiet any tension or stress <laughs> they um, um, might feel towards what they see as something unacceptable. So if you find it acceptable, if you find the unacceptable acceptable, well then it's no longer unacceptable and it's no longer something you're going to fix. And um, again, the fact that idiots would think the peeling paint on my ceiling matters is just the definition of an idiot. That's the IQ test for idiot, is you put something like peeling paint on a ceiling and uh, pig beaten in a slaughterhouse, you put those two things on the scales, and if they can't figure out which one means something and which one means nothing, then that's, you've done the IQ test. You found out who an idiot is. So, um, again, this is, I'll say it again, you're just a purveyor of idiocracy. Um, faith in your Christ is faith in a, uh, a doorstop. Um, it's faith in nothing. Uh, a, a broken, empty, vacant, vacuous ideology of mush um, that will fix nothing, will stop nothing, will save us from nothing. It will just perpetuate stupid behavior 
uh, imbecile doing imbecile. Um, stupid is as stupid does. Uh, <clears throat> comfortable is as comfortable does. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, fuck all that nonsense. So anyway, and then he ends it with this preaching on, uh, you know, the, the magical therapies. So they're always selling some kind of snake oil, you know, even when they're not personally selling it. They just love the idea of snake oil, magic powers. Um, you know, why don't you sell, you know, blessed glitter? Why don't you go get a priest to bless some glitter and sell that? Um, this potion bullshit. So, you know, apparently there's some wacky doctor who thinks all of back pain, you know, apparently. I mean, it doesn't really make a distinction. Like, there's a tiny percentage of people who experience pain where it's psychosomatic. That is, their brain has um, fucked them in the ass, so to speak. And now they're feeling it in their ass as if they are actually were fucked and they weren't. Um, yeah, the fact that people are capable of doing that, so what? It has nothing to do with 99.5% of people who have back pain. So this is just a silly pile of mush. This anecdotal evidence means nothing to a rational human being because they say, well, why don't they just study it if it's such magic? They can just have the... They can, it's a pretty easy survey to do. Sugar pills versus reading two chapter of Dr. Wacky Bat's uh, book and see who's uh, better after four months. Um... But, I mean, it's just, it's just silly. Um, certainly, uh, our brain states uh, control our uh, endocrine system, all the, all the glandular systems. And um, certainly, it's all tied together. Thoughts are connected to uh, physiological reactions. Obviously, perceptions. If I see something happening, I, my body will have a reaction because my brain sees it, it connects it to certain reactions, and that's how it's supposed to work. I'm supposed to run when the boogeyman's coming, um, or the tiger, or whatever the fuck, and if something I care about is going to get harmed, I'm supposed to have a physiological reaction so I can go do something immediately, uh, do some kind of heroic thing. Um, so, duh. I mean, duh. So I don't need this anecdotal evidence that uh, you know sometimes you you can hurt yourself um, by rolling thoughts that will uh, cripple you in some way or do something negative to your function. But again, some of that is inevitable if you're going to be um, capable of experiencing or know, have knowledge of. Um, the motivation to do something about it. You have to be motivated. That's just, the, I, again, I've made this argument, but that's one of the things you have to learn as an intelligence is that your sensations are the motivation. And frankly, if you can pacify your sensations, if you can take the meaning out of horror, if you can take the, the visceralness out of it, yes, then it doesn't mean anything. You won't react to it. You need to feel it to react. It's just the way the machine works. So no matter what uh, your intellectual self perceives, it has to, it always has to translate it into monkey to make the body do what needs to get done, to, to, to do. It has to create the personal incentive. So no matter, even if you have an objective goal, you're going to have to make it personal to be able to do it. And that's a functional part of reality here. And so you, you painkillers, <laughs> you people attempting to fill p people full of passivity and, and acceptance, um, are the, are the, are the, you make it possible. You're the, you're the people who are sitting there rubbing the cock of the rich and, and uh, helping them lubricate their, their um, penetrating... <laughs> um, horror on humanity. You're greasing it up for them. You're enablers. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm again it. Uh, and I'm again you for, because I, I'm just saying, you're not stupid enough to fall for this shit. You really aren't. Uh, <laughs> there's just no way. Um, <clears throat> I, I mean, uh, you know, all of the science you're denying is disgusting. Um, we're evolved animals, and that's all that's happened here. There's no God. Didn't, God didn't make animals on Earth. He didn't create this slop. It evolved here, and the evidence of evolution is overwhelming, and it's just silly to play these lie games with people. 
uh, whatever your game is, like I said, I mean, whatever um, um, strategy you're invoking, it's one based on some kind of notion that uh, I can get it done through a lie. Well, I don't have that notion that I need to lie to get it done, so I'm not going to do that until somebody proves to me <laughs> that lying's the way to go. Um, but anyway, it's just really, really disgusting. So, and I, you know, and there's so many things I could bring up about it. I, you know, it's still kind of, you know, I saw it. You know, my, my sister, when she was dying of cancer, um, you know, got a little three-year-old daughter dying of cancer, really horrible. And yeah, she's flying all over the world with a you know infected spine, uh, you know, uh, in terrible pain, uh, being dragged around to all these little miracle cure places to go get a miracle, uh, you know. And so this you know they're selling this slop, you know. What, the obligation is for people to prove they have a miracle, not to not to just sell it before they can prove it. And again, this this is supposed to be a, a scientist. Well, he's not a scientist if he doesn't understand his obligation. To demonstrate something as a truth, not with a bunch of anecdotal characters, you got to do better than that. Here's somebody who saw a UFO. There proves there's UFOs because he said he saw one. No, that's that's irrational as evidence of anything. Um, so really bad on you shoving this. You know, you 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 sit there and say, oh yeah, you have a certain level of respect for me. Well, I, apparently you don't, because you don't have any respect for my intelligence if you think I'm going to fall for this crap as a solution. Um, that I would say that in theory, this could mean almost nothing in, again, 99.99 .99 cases. And, um, I mean, I don't want to go into a whole bunch of psychological and physiological truth here, but I'm just saying the fact that my disorder, my anxiety, my condition was something I was conditioned into in an early age means it's that much more intractable. I didn't have a panic attack at 40, okay, so it's a little different than your circumstance. And the fact that you feel all better now and that your shingles went away because you got a better attitude and you had love in your heart, um, again, that's just not meaningful as evidence of anything. And, uh, Again, I'd also state, I just, I, uh, your theory that somehow you can painlessly watch um, brutality and torture and harm and it shouldn't pain you would be, in my opinion, illogical anyway. It's just fundamentally illogical. I should be stressed. I should be quite uncomfortable living on planet Earth, a, a planet full of horribly unfair, sadistic, selfish cunts. And I'm not supposed to be horrified or afraid or, or depressed. I think that would be retarded. You assholes are sitting there rubbing the cock of rich cunts who inherited it and are claiming they're heroes and they're great athletes and they're great men. And they haven't done anything but contrive ways of stealing money from other people. Again, Trump isn't the art of the deal. He's the art of the steal. That's all he's ever attempted to do was steal money from people. He hasn't done anything productive in his whole fucking life. And you think he's a hero. An admirable sort. Fuck you. Um, again, you think the peeling paint on my ceiling means something. That, that there, there's something reasonable in the people who are bothered by that. But they're not bothered by social inequity. And they're, they're, they're perfectly willing to say it's okay if the poor are with, are with us always. <laughs> That's okay. I'm okay with that. That's a good enough game. Well, the fact that it's a good enough game is, like, again, just because I'm just saying it. Because you don't have rational sensibilities. You can't add two plus two and come up with fucking four. And so I'm not the broken one here. You're the one that needs the cure, fucker. <laughs> You're the one with the broken psychology and the broken philosophy. You can't even you can't get a fact right, and you can't get a feeling right. So, anyway, that's um, okay. So, uh, but again, if, who who wants to be bothered doing this? I don't want to sit there and psychoanalyze you to demonstrate your philosophy is a pile of shit. I'm not sitting here saying, oh, your your religious belief is an emotional contrivance. 
uh, an emotional safety guard, say safeguard, uh, uh, some sort of emotional defense mechanism or some, some other kind of bullshit. Well, I'm just going to argue it as a, a, a premise or an axiom of reality. And again, just like stating this doctor can cure back pain by having anecdotal individuals state, I'm all better now. I mean, <laughs> again, it's just, it's just, it's so obviously silly as evidence that what do you want me to say? And again, the, the whole Bible is a convoluted pile of mushy contradictions, and so you think there's evidence in there of something besides an insanely insipid and silly story. I mean, you could go through so many things. Uh, you know, so, so why didn't God, when, when he destroyed the world and had the new covenant, okay, the Noah, uh, Noah thing, why didn't he forgive Eve's sin then? We're supposed to be starting over. Okay, a new deal. He still didn't forgive her. He's still, impo still imposing uh, the period and, and pain in childbirth on women. Still, still couldn't let it go. Then when Jesus is dead on the cross, dead, he's hanging there dead, and all the sins are supposed to be forgiven with his blood, women are still bleeding. They're still gotten pain in childbirth. He still hasn't forgiven Eve. What the fuck? Wait, I'm supposed to see something rational in your God? What exactly what do I do in this heaven of yours? I rub the pearly gates. Ooh, they're pearly. And then I go find all the rubies and emeralds that are all around the bottom of heaven. Right? That's the only description you get of heaven is that it's lots of rubies and emeralds. Ooh, no peeling paint. Ooh, I'm so excited. No, I'm not excited at all. Uh, by Jesus' own statement, uh, I'm not going to heaven with my wife or anyone I love. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like I, I'm going to fundamentally, everything I care about in this life, yeah, I'm not going to have any knowledge of. So it's not even going to be me in heaven, which is the, the funniest irony or joke or catch-22 or whatever you want to call it of your silly religion, is that I don't even go there um, with the same the sensibilities that I describe as me. Me doesn't even go there. Me doesn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> so what? So well, why would I bother? I sent a generic soul to heaven. A generic soul to do generic ruby loving. Wow. Gee, what an accomplishment. We went through all this crap here on earth so we could send generic souls to go do little Borg uh, ruby polishing. Oh, so fucking cool. What a great idea. Yeah, let's get some more torture for that. That's certainly worth torturing things over. Yeah, let's fry up another pig and yum yum for that. I mean, oh, fuck you people. This is silly. This is a silly fucking narrative of reality. Um, and you're going to sit there and insult my intelligence, like I said, with this, this, whatever this mush is, implying that, uh, you know, uh, the problems in the world are, are non-existent. The problem is in my inability to love vomit. <laughs> yeah, I have a, a vomit bigotry. No, I don't. And again, this is what goes right back to the, the whole conversation about the whole cutesy girl and shit. He thinks there's this love thing that conquers all, and so it wouldn't matter if she's ugly as fuck and... Uh, you know, I'm going to have just as much fun making love to her if she's ugly. Like, that's a reality somewhere in your world? Well, it's not a reality in any, any, any world I know of. And it's certainly all the Christians you see, they certainly don't seem to have that ability. They seem to find their wives repulsive and the hookers attractive. Um, so again, I'm not trying to diminish that there isn't... Uh, that there isn't things just about even 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 uh, my appreciation for um, your uh, voice and your ability to uh, tell a story, um, even just the fact of the the uh, the familiarity of our contest through time, the fact that we have been in the arena and maybe we've uh, drank a little of each other's sweat, so to speak, and. So, yeah, we've, we've got a little bit of a bonding just through that association in the contest. 
and uh, you can have an appreciation for that. You can have a, a nostalgic connection to it. You know, I mean, there's tons of songs when I hear them, I get stoned just because they're <laughs> the pattern is part of who I was and what I experienced, and those experiences are relived when the you know, Hotel California is the most glaring example. I'm stoned. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Dude. Uh, no. I, I mean, it's just, yeah, you just have to hum a few bars. So, yeah, there's just, that's how life is. Um, we uh, come attached and all of that kind of crap. But it's often for very crude and subjective reasons, and you just kind of discounted the that that's the substance of the attraction. And yeah, there could be more to that, and it develops into more than that, and all this other kind of bullshit. But the, the fact is, the thing that opens the door to your view is fuckability, or some kind of personal, subjective, usually tacky and superficial um, element. And... Um, Yeah, that's a, a, an abhorrent reality. It's a disgusting fact of our existence. So it's disgusting that we're animals. And, you know, we got to sniff a butt first and, and before we decide who we're going to hit and who we're going to love. I mean, it's all kind of just as bad as that. We're, we're, we are having a great deal of difficulty rising above being just stupid monkeys who are reacting to... He went blah, 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 to me. He chattered at me. I'm going to go bash him with a stick. I mean, just to this superficial, knee-jerk, reactive, subjective, um, um, narrow sensibilities, crude sensibilities, and that this isn't what we should be doing in terms of when we're talking about what it is to be civilized and what it is to be somebody who gives a shit about the efficiency of our function. Uh, those conversations shouldn't be constantly dragged into the sewer of this emotional bullshit. This let's attack the emotions of the messenger. So we're no longer it's a philosophy. We're just going to psychoanalyze each other and blame anything, any theory you have, anything, no matter what you say, whether it's a, a mathematical or physics or engineering or architecture, we're just going to turn into subjective crap. And fuck that. Fuck that tactic. Um... Yeah, I, I mean, it's just a, a, a highly irritating way to do uh, conversation or philosophy. And uh, it's just a little bit pitiful that you get rewarded for it. So, I mean, you, I could read some of these comments and they're just on their face. Well, the astonishing agnostic is that Bibbly Bobbly who, whatever his name was, Billy Micmac or something. I'm quite literally astounded. Whatever you believe in your heart of hearts, your grasp of philosophy is without equal. So, he's, he's, again, he spent, whatever, half the video selling uh, some kind of wacky, you don't have to have back pain. No, no, it's just your brain trying to distract you, which doesn't even make any sense. And anybody who's had back pain would know. That it doesn't it doesn't make the world a lovely and better place. It doesn't make me it doesn't maybe it doesn't make you forget that you have a mortgage payment. It doesn't make you forget that your, you know, wife's ass is getting fat. It doesn't make you forget any of that shit. It just makes it all that much bleak and that much more horrible. So even the theory uh, you know that this guy is basing it on is nonsense. Um, but clearly the fact that your emotional states will have an effect on your physiological state. Well, I mean, your thinking state will have an effect on your physiological state, and your physiological state will create a tendency to be more sensitive or less sensitive. Um, yeah, who's who's denying that? Obviously, that's that you can see that just in even athletics. I mean, you know, the more adrenal crap you got running through you, the less you're going to feel the pain. It, you know, that's how you burn the pain away. But you can't live at that rate. You can't live at that, uh, uh, you know, performance standard. So, another one of the little silly 
poofters, you know, why don't you all people, why don't you all get tambourines and you can all do your little hairy Christmas spin in a circle dance. I mean, it's just so disgusting that this is what human beings waste time with this silly mush. I recommend meditation. Oh, Jesus. For those who are wary of religion. Oh, yes, it's just, it's just like religion. It's just be vacuous, be empty-headed. Uh, if you don't see it, it doesn't exist. So you can make all the baddy waddy go away way by just pretending it doesn't existy existy. Oh, God, I hate you fucking cunts. Meditation is a powerful tool to become conscious of your body. Yeah, well, whatever. Obviously, it says exactly the opposite. Thoughts and to reduce stress and live in the moment, whatever the fuck that is. Yes, yeah, whatever you say. A few weeks of daily meditation already produces significant changes in the brain. Well, why don't you prove any of that? Why don't you show us how all these brilliant meditative people are curing cancer, doing something useful in the world, besides just, you know, sticking their fingers in each other's asses and saying, aren't I cool? Why don't you show me one of these fucking goddamn meditative state people doing a motherfucking thing of any goddamn value? Oh, that's right, you can't do that because they're not doing anything of value. They're just escaping. Selfish little cunts escaping. I agree with you, Fake Sagan, that our thoughts, our state of mind, deeply impact our health. Well, they don't deeply impact it. You know what impacts it even more? Eating fucking donuts. That's what impacts it even more. You want to impact your health a lot? Eat a lot of donuts. And drink a lot of Coca-Cola. And I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll guarantee you, you will impact your health. Years ago, I was a toxic relationship, and I couldn't let go of my emotions. I broke out in bleeding, whatever, rashes all over my body. I had, I had, uh, before. Well, anyway, um, you know, this is like a, a fake sake and shingles argument. He says something like, wow, shingles only happens to old people. No, that's really not true. And it, it happens to a ton of people you know, right around the midlife crisis thingy, 35 to 40, it does, there's a whole, that's one of the times when it has a little tiny peak bubble. And again, it probably has to do with the fact that your, your metabolism is going from building the body to destroying the body, <laughs> okay? You're going from being something that's being, being supported in its survival to a, a physiological uh, mechanism that is now trying to kill you. So, you, you know, your body's going from keep him strong to take care of his kids to kill him because now he's just wasting food. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but whatever. Believe your own ribbilly rib babbly. Uh, I broke out, blah, 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 anyway. At one point, my doctors asked if I was going through stress. I mean, this whole thing of stress being bad. Stress is a good thing. Stress keeps you in the game. Um, it's only people who are... An outrageously bad condition where they haven't stressed their body where they actually haven't gotten tense and so yeah they you know lift up a, a shovel full of snow and they drop dead because they don't even know what stress is and it really opened my eyes and I started taking care of myself well let's and your icon proves it oh yeah look at that he's he looks perfectly just as generic as you can get look how round his head is it's amazing. And the thin neck. It's just amazing. Anyway. I have been watching your videos since Hard Case on You Days. My vodicular response uh, to you coming out as a Christian was contempt and befuddlement. But really looking at it closer, it's just unfounded ill will. Oh, so he's an atheist who thinks religion is really not a bad thing. It's a good little toy to play with. It's not dangerous at all. Still tied to me growing as a person during adolescence. So, so now you're a friend of the Christians. I've enjoyed your ponage and drama videos, but uh, hearing you now, I feel as though those were a bit of a put on, if not having some truth to them as well, of course. Uh, misjudging someone's character. Oh, Jesus Christ. So it's, now he's a snake oil salesman. It's all, oh, oh, he's just so interesting. Anyway, let's see. I don't think there's helping in Mendham's negativity. He feeds off of it. He loves it. Just an amazing statement. And Mendham would feed and love and whatever 
no matter what, because frankly, I'm just a super cool person, just in general. <laughs> you know, okay, I mean, you, you people are all just kind of boring and dull, and I just happen to be uh, an incredibly well-manufactured machine. And so, yeah, no matter what I, whatever stupid mindset I had, I'd be great at it because I'm just great at shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but there's no response to this. Feeding off of negativity? Why don't you explain how that somebody does that, you fucking cunt? I, it's just the stupidest thing to say. There's no way to feed off of it. It can only do, it can only get in your way. But again, how the fuck you don't change anything unless you can't do that. You have to experience it. You're not going to jump on the grenade unless you think it, it, it's damn important. Unless you really know the value of the harm that's going to be caused somebody else. You have to experience it. You have to emotionally be invested in that value. There's no other way. You're just so, I mean, <laughs> you know, you're just so... You're just so stupid. What, you think women, uh, you know, jump in front of cars to save their kids because they have highly structured intellectual principles? No. It's a crude passion, retards. Alright, uh, let's see. Gary is highly principled. He's always lived his, his beliefs. His epilogue is incredibly airtight. Okay, he'd be a consummate aesthetic and evil. Well, whatever, so I don't... Uh, I'll not bother reading the completely accurate, <laughs> you know, post. Uh, there is no self. I just love these people. I mean, you're just, what the, how do you come up with that kind of crap? There's obviously individual brains. They have individual uh, conditioning and experience. It's just silly just to just sit there and negate the existence of that individuality. Um, all right. Usually, I'll watch 20 minutes of a video on YouTube, walk away and with, hmm, that's interesting, uh, and never think about it again. I'll be thinking about this video for days. Yeah. So, he's going to think about the wonderful, magical doctor whoever, who has the wonderful book that says, well, if you know your back pain is of just a distraction, you can just make it go away. poof de dee doof de dee because there's no real physical causes for these things. It's all in your head. It's all your bad attitude. Gary is such a cancer these days. Yes, well, and he's a, a demonic teddy bear icon. It really makes a lot of sense. Ah, Gary is struggling against powerful demons, so that's the, that's the frickin' game played here. The demons make me do it. The demons have me blinded to God's beautiful plan <laughs> of preposterous mediocrity. Pukish. Let's all go plant some potatoes like the Jehovah Witnesses. Their their beautiful vision of the Christian heaven, where you where you go live on little house in the prairie and you go out and sweat planting some good old potatoes and you come home to the old dull boring wifey and the little annoying children and you say what well, did you play hopscotch today isn't that cute ha 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 well i'm too tired to give a shit because i've been planting potatoes all day so i'm gonna go bang the wife and take a nappy all right, it doesn't sound that bad, but I mean, it's just like, who wants to do that for more than a few days as an amusement park? Yeah, that's about all I could stand. Okay, five days at that amusement park, and I think I've done it all I need to do. I could ride that ride a few times, and then it's just time to go someplace fucking else. But to do that forever? Fuck that. Look, this is an unplayable game by anything but sadistic fucks. The game is made to be played by organisms who are self-interested, genetically controlled, borgy, sadistic, evil machines. It's not made to be played by something sophisticated and interesting and something that has some sort of capacity to see <laughs> good and evil in the world. Smart things aren't 
going to play this dumb fucking game and you're going to keep pretending it's really a smart game. It's not a smart game. That's why, I mean, the example of all the animals demonstrated, the examples of most of the human lives being some kind of disgusting thing you'd never want to live. You wouldn't want to be born in Biafra. You wouldn't want to be born where most of the human race is being born right now. So why all these lies about how wonderful this all is, and that it's only these evil, blinded by the demons, that they're forced to see how it's not as good as God says so. I mean, it's just so... So, regardless, I guess there's no room for a philosophical argument about the fact that we are uh, animal psychologies that have through, you know, built over four billion years, and then over the last few thousand years, we've been endowed with the capacity to do language, create uh, symbolic abstractions, representations of concepts and ideas in our head, and we've been able to manipulate them in an illusionary space that duplicates, that can mimic reality, and now we can understand how to play the game. We can see the game in our brain like a chessboard. We don't have to be players on the board anymore, blinded and not being able to see, just being able to see what, what pieces are right near us. You know, there's that horsey guy over there and that castly thing's coming at me. You play chess on the chessboard, you're not going to win. You're not going to, you're not going to be able to play much of a game. You play it with an eye above the board, then you can play a much more complex game. And that's what we're capable of doing. We're capable of playing a much more complex game. And you stupid cunts want to keep dragging us back to the board. <sighs> Fuck. So anyway, this video, uh, that'll have to do, I guess. The, 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 other, the other video was better, but <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Uh, the point probably won't be understood. Um, I, I'll just emphasize, to fix things, Broken's gotta hurt. You gotta find broken, obnoxious, and irritating, and it's gotta bother you. Our fix won't happen. That's just a truth. So, um, I'm not saying I want my pain. I'm just saying, in my opinion, there's nothing horribly disconnected between my pain and the and and what exists in the world, and. The unfortunate fact is, though, that my comfort, my pleasure, is disconnected from anything of real merit. That my pleasure is derived superficially and um, not merit-based. And that's disappointing. But anyway, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you in this tripe. Uh, this Alex Jonesian fucking bullshit. Uh, everything would be just fine if the FDA would leave us alone. <laughs> Humans are great. I, I just, you know, no, it's too stupid. Too fucking stupid.